What's up, folks? I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at Occupy Fantasy, here with a look at the 12-game Week 13 slate of the NFL season on FanDuel, DraftKings, and Yahoo. Favorite play on the slate this week is Detroit Lions wide receiver Amon Ra St. Brown. St. Brown has seen eight plus targets in every single game that he has been healthy for this year, and he is the main wide receiver for Detroit's Jared Goff, who will be facing the third worst pass defense in the NFL this year from the Jacksonville Jaguars. So this is going to be one of the more popular game environments that players select NFL players from for their DFS lineups this week. Amon Ross St. Brown is absolutely the best player from that environment you're going to want to include in all contest types. On to the normal agenda for the show. If you've been with us before, you know that we like to look at the betting market data and see which running backs are playing in the most favorable game script environments based off of who is favored here uh, from the odds makers. The Baltimore Ravens are the biggest favorites this week. They have a 10-point advantage in markets against the Denver Broncos this week, and that means that we should be interested in Gus Edwards, who did take over the backfield last week, returning from injury after missing a few weeks of play for the Ravens. 16 carries last week in the backfield for the Baltimore Ravens. Kenyon Drake's role shrunk considerably. The only major concern with Edwards is that, obviously, he's going to have to split attempts with Lamar Jackson in the running game, and the passing game involvement is virtually non-existent, just two targets on the year since we're coming back from the pup list way back in in October. So Gus Edwards, an interesting high-risk play, I would say, in a favorable spot in Week 13. We've got Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is one of the better running backs in the entire NFL, and he is favored by seven points. I should say his Browns are favored by seven points in their matchup with the Houston Texans this week. Uh, Chubb will be benefiting from the fact that he is running behind a decent offensive line, and he's facing the third worst rush defense in the NFL here in Week 13. So consider Nick Chubb as an interesting play. We have Kenneth Walker the third. Walker is going to be one of the more popular plays in DFS this week at the running back position. He's also our favorite play in the Occupy model as a running back, so play accordingly. We do think that the uh, Rams are a tough matchup. Obviously, they're one of the top five rush defenses in the league, according to Football Outsiders DVOA data, but Walker has been crushing it in the opportunity department for the Seahawks in recent weeks, and we think that continues here in Week 13. So we really think that Kenneth Walker III should be a running back that you continue to use heavily this week. Biggest weakness for the Rams is in the passing game defending running backs, so hopefully Walker has more targets like he did a couple weeks ago against Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. Philadelphia Eagles are favored by 5.5 in their matchup this weekend against the Tennessee Titans. That means we should be mildly interested in Miles Sanders, who has about a 50% share of the rush attempts in this offense, has about a 6% target share. It's crept up a little bit. The Eagles are spreading the ball around a little bit more to their tertiary wide receiver, Quez Watkins and Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell in the running game, instead of using the tight end with Dallas Goddard out. So we got a little bit of a bump for Sanders. The biggest concern with Sanders here is that he's facing one of the tougher defenses in the league uh, to run against. In fact, the Titans are the best rush defense in the NFL on the season. So kind of a tough spot for Sanders, but the Eagles are favored nonetheless. So that, so that is a reason to be somewhat interested in him here in week 13. Christian McCaffrey with the San Francisco 49ers. Still the most expensive running back on DraftKings, despite the fact that he's been somewhat of a part-time player since joining the 49ers. Uh, one thing that may work in his favor is that Elijah Mitchell is out for an extended period of time with an injury. So maybe McCaffrey's usage increases, but I suspect what Kyle Shanahan actually does is give a little bit more work in the backfield to guys like Jordan Mason and Tyrion Davis Price. We'll see McCaffrey's linger in this 10 to 12 carry range. Hopefully the six, seven, eight targets that he's definitely slotted to get in this offense continue, but at his price, McCaffrey continues to be a little prohibitive, especially in lowest contests in DFS. Now the most popular plays at the running back position are the ones to consider in your low risk lineups. Obviously, I already like Ken Walker III, talked about him a little bit. The Occupy model is pushing us towards considering a couple of other plays that will be popular. Josh Jacobs, off of his 50-point game last week, is projected to be the highest-owned running back on DraftKings and Yahoo this week. He's just $7,900 in his matchup with the Los Angeles Chargers, who are the fourth-worst rush defense in the NFL. And not only that... The Raiders have the best run blocking in the game this year. So Jacobs, once again, will have an opportunity to succeed. He's got like 90% of the rush attempts in this offense, both on the season and in recent weeks. So there's little reason to expect Jacobs to uh, fail in, turn, in the opportunity department here. 
And then the other running back that I'm most interested in is Travis Etienne Jr. Foot injury last week. I guess he was cleared to return by the medical staff, but the Jaguars opted to play it safe and keep him out of the game. It's a little scary, obviously. It means they obviously trust Jamichael Hasty to handle the workload if need be, but it does look like Etienne here who uh, got limited practices in this week, is listed questionable, is in line to play. He said after the game last week that he expects to play. So going to be another option you can consider in low risk. That's cheap on DraftKings, a little bit more cost prohibitive over on FanDuel. Houston's Damian Pierce has not had a good game in a few weeks, but still dominates the touches in their backfield. 5,900 on DraftKings, 6,500 over on FanDuel. So what I'm looking to do this week here is actually play ETN. He's a little bit of correlation with Amon Ross St. Brown as well in your lineup. And then you can take Ken Walker III, our highest ranked running back, put him in the flex position on DraftKings. And you've got plenty here, I think, to finish off a cash game lineup on DraftKings. One of the things that there is some merit to considering on FanDuel, also on DraftKings, is value play Zonovan Knight for the New York Jets. Going back over to our model here on Saturday morning, he actually is the third highest ranked play at the position on DraftKings for us and the fourth highest ranked play over on FanDuel because we expect Zonovan Knight to start against the Minnesota Vikings here in Week 13 because Michael Carter is listed as questionable at the position. Knight, 5,800 over on FanDuel, 4,600 here on DraftKings. Do think we may see players start to rationalize playing Knight in low-risk contests to make some other things work. So I think that's a fine play, especially on FanDuel, where we need some value at the position the way that the running backs are priced this week. You'll see some of these guys we like on DraftKings. Etienne, especially, is a little bit cheaper on DraftKings, relatively speaking. So that's a little bit on that situation. Keep an eye on that for Knight this week. Um, Below average run blocking for the Jets. Roughly average matchup against the Vikings uh, rush defense this week. So really just a pure volume play at cost, but I do think it's one worth considering. Probably a low-end running back too, but one that could be useful in DFS lineups this weekend. All right, some of the uh, highest implied team totals this weekend. We have obviously Jacksonville, Detroit, going to be one of the more popular game stacks of the week. We have Kansas City and Cincinnati playing each other. That's going to be the most popular game, I think, this weekend, though the one people are most excited to watch anyway. We have the Raiders and the Chargers playing in a 50-point total. The Browns and the Texans and the Vikings and the Jets playing in a 47-point total. Cleveland being favored by a touchdown in that 47-point total actually does have the highest implied team total on the week. And so I do think you will see, making his debut, Cleveland quarterback Deshaun Watson used somewhat heavily in low-risk lineups this week for his upside. Remember, this is a quarterback that does have a little bit of a dual threat ability in his bag. So Watson does have the ability to run a little bit in addition to passing. Brissett himself was having a good season uh, inside the top 10 in advanced analytics, like expected points added plus completion percentage over expected for those of you who look at that stuff. So I do think Watson now slotting into his quarterback one spot for the Browns with weapons like Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and Harrison Bryant, who is a cheap tight end, is going to be one of the more popular plays at quarterback, especially in lowest contests. The other route people will go is play Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence, just $5,900 in this game against the Detroit Lions, where he is the underdog side of the game, but he seems to be popping in a lot of the optimal lineups uh, that are popular across the industry. And we also have Lawrence projected for the highest uh, projected ownership in High-risk contest this week, which is a good indicator always that that quarterback is going to be highly owned in low-risk contests. Using Watson, we can also play a cheap tight end in Harrison Bryant, who will start this week because David Njoku is out for the Cleveland Browns. He's just $2,700 here on DraftKings. We've seen Bryant play expanded roles in the past. Obviously, he has two-plus targets in each of the last three games. Uh, touchdown two weeks ago against the Miami Dolphins came in a game that David Njoku did not play. So expect Bryant to run a lot of routes and be available to Deshaun Watson in a good passing matchup against a poor Texans defense. So I do think he makes a ton of sense at tight end in low risk this week. If you're punting at the position, it's going to be a little difficult to pay all the way up at the tight end position this week. But obviously, we have... Kelsey, Andrews, Hawkinson that are all useful. 
Don't sleep on Pat Fryermuth. He's going to be one of the more popular tight ends that people use this week in DFS contests at a mid-range price, just 4300 here over on DraftKings. And on FanDuel, he's just $5,900. But he comes in as the most popular play in our model at the tight end position on DraftKings and as the second most popular play over on FanDuel behind Travis Kelsey. Personally, in terms of low risk right now, I am considering Harrison Bryant because I do think it pairs nicely with Deshaun Watson and allows us to pay up in some other spots. Defense. This week, the field is going to be deploying the Pittsburgh Steelers on DraftKings against the Atlanta Falcons. I uh, wouldn't overthink the spot. That's your lowest defense of the week. We've got 4900 per player remaining to finish off a low-risk lineup here on DraftKings this week. And one of the players that should be considered heavily is Nico Collins of the Houston Texans. We have Brandon Cooks, who's going to be out this week for the Texans, even with Cook in the lineup. Nico Collins has had a huge role. He has seen uh, seven plus targets in each of the last three weeks of play, and now he gets to start without Brandon Cooks on the exterior. So expect Texans quarterback Kyle Allen to look for Nico Collins early and often in this matchup against the Browns, where the Texans are expected to trail for virtually the entire game. So Collins, to me, is an excellent play. We've got $5,600 to finish up a low-risk lineup. We need a wide receiver based off of how I have constructed this build, and there are plenty of players in this range that should be uh, interesting plays this week, including New York Jets wide receiver Garrett Wilson, who I do believe is one of the most popular plays on the slate at the wide receiver position. Uh, Looking at our model, he's the second most popular play at the position. So that's one way to build a low risk lineup. That's probably how I would approach it here in week 13. Now in high risk contests, obviously we got a decent framework here with the Browns uh, to get towards those three one stacks that we certainly like to consider. Uh, So you could find a a path to doing that here. And I do think the easiest way to do so is to find a way to get Amari Cooper into your lineup. And one of the ways to do that is to come off of one of these other running backs and play a value play. So I do think we could play uh, Etienne Walker, for example, here. I've got Cooper Bryant, Nico Collins. This is just a slight pivot of a popular low-risk lineup. I've got $7,100 for a flex play, and I think it's certainly viable to play any one of these players in this range and finish off your high-risk lineup that includes... Uh, the Browns. The Browns are not my favorite high-risk stack this week, to be honest with you. I, to be honest with you, at this point, I do think we want to be on uh, what the field is on, and it is Jacksonville and Detroit. And so I do think we want to consider playing uh, Trevor Lawrence. It's also going to be popular and low-risk. Christian Kirk also going to be popular and low risk. So now we have a 3-1 here that is reasonably popular. I've got $6,000 per player remaining to finish off a high risk lineup. I certainly think this is one way to get things done in high risk contests this week. Other builds to consider. Obviously the Chiefs and the Bengals haven't talked about them enough in this video for you and it's certainly going to be something that the field is considering heavily. I think it's pretty tough to do things with this game because of how the slate is priced. Mahomes and Kelsey obviously being pretty cost prohibitive is uh, something to consider. Getting them both in here, I just have 35, 66 per player remaining. Probably cannot play a couple of these other 7K plus players around this game, and that's ultimately what's going to drive the decision-making on how to attack Cincinnati and Kansas City. I think what you're most likely to see the field do is play Burrow because he's going to be a popular quarterback this week in all contest types. Pair him with one of these wide receivers, probably T. Higgins if people are afraid of Chase coming off of injury and use Kelsey as a bring back. Uh, but still, look, I've got 24, 50 per player remaining. You can't build this lineup with these players in it. So you're probably going to see the field come off of someone like Ken Walker, uh, probably see the field play Zonovan Knight, who is cheap to make something like this work. Um, 36, 50 per player remaining, still pretty tough with two spots left. So I don't know if we can actually find ways to effectively stack this game while also playing some of the more popular players on the slate. That's the key. So I do think we can do it, but we're going to have to get a little more creative and probably play some of the lower owned wide receivers to make these more expensive high upside stacks in high total games work. And we have a few of them to consider in the Occupy model. That should help us get there. We've got five wide receivers that are on the underperforming wide receiver list this week on the main slate that are playable. Washington's Terry McLaurin, Philadelphia's Devonta Smith, 
Miami's Jalen Waddle, Green Bay's Alan Lazard, and Tennessee's Robert Woods. Now looking at pricing, obviously Robert Woods is the one that does us the most favors here at the wide receiver position. The other player that is interesting this week to consider is Denver Broncos tight end Greg Dulcich. Dulcich is on our underperforming wide receiver list. He's just $3,400, but some of these guys can help you build out a high-risk lineup that includes some of the more expensive players from the higher total games on the slate. Underperforming wide receivers and tight ends in this case have seen a ton of targets and air yards in recent weeks from their quarterbacks, haven't necessarily capitalized on those opportunities. We can take advantage of that by slotting some of these guys into our lineups this week to try and make some things fit. And that's probably the best way to find a path towards stacking the Bengals and the Chiefs this week specifically. Now, my other favorite game to stack this week is the Raiders and the Chargers. Raiders are an extremely easy offense to predict in fantasy football. We've got, obviously, Derek Carr quarterback. Devontae Adams seeing nearly 40% of the targets. You can mix in a very popular Josh Jacobs on this slate, or you can, you can consider Matt Collins, the clear secondary wide receiver, or Foster Moreau at tight end, who's going to be extremely popular. And then on the Chargers side, you've got Keenan Allen, We've got Josh Palmer, who will start again this week. DeAndre Carter had a pretty big game last week, 10 targets, and still is just $3,900. So I think he's one of my pop, my favorite lower-priced wide receivers on this slate and high-risk contest to consider. And now we've got a 3-1 here with the Raiders and the Chargers with plenty of salary remaining. There are lots of outs on this slate. There are a lot of teams on this slate, so there's a lot of different directions you can go. I am intrigued by it. I do think that one of the ways – to make sure that you have the most success this week, once again, going back to what I said off the top of the video, is to keep it simple, especially if you're playing low-risk contests or small field high-risk contests, and just deploy some of the more popular plays on the slate. Amon Ross St. Brown, the best play on the slate in our opinion. Uh, nice correlation with Jacksonville's Travis Etienne Jr. We have Kenneth Walker III, the highest ranked running back in the Occupy model. These are players that I would consider in all of your lineups in low risk and in small field high risk contests this week. That's a little bit on week 13. More information is in the Occupy Fantasy NFL DFS plug over on our website. I'd encourage you to go over there because I can go into more detail in our plug than I can go through in this video for you. Good luck this weekend in NFL DFS, and we'll be back next weekend to talk to you about week 14 of the NFL season.